So thus far in these first three lessons, now moving on to the fourth lesson, we've focused our lens, our sight on what Americans were like, what the American citizenship did. So you've read a history that says that Americans are very happy with the material well-being. They leave behind a war. Now they come back to the United States. They see New York City. They see the flair. They see everything around. And they say, give me that car. Give me that house. Let's have kids. Let's get married. Let's do things that we couldn't do in a time of war. And there are certainly some benefits to living an excellent life and enjoying material well-being. And then there are some downsides, right? The downside is perhaps we do what we're told. Perhaps we don't know why we're doing what we're doing. So the first three readings say, wake up and take a look at what your life is like. Take a look at why you're doing what you're doing and try to uh, develop a sense of purpose. Now, I wanna shift our attention because the last three assignments that we're gonna cover really deal with the United States in broader international affairs. We had fought World War II with a set of allies. One of those allies was the Soviet Union. Now we know that the Soviet Union for some 20, 30 years had been led by a regime uh, that was communist in nature, the Soviet regime. And the question after World War II is, is the Soviet Union going to be willing to work with us in order to accommodate or to achieve peace after World War II? And there was great, great hope after World War II that this exactly would be the case. Uh, there's this notion that is put forward by American leaders. Let's have a United Nations and let's have a Security Council. And within that Security Council, let's assign specific power and authority and responsibility uh, to the most powerful nations in the world. So there's this idea that somehow if you grant to the greatest powers in the world their separate spheres of power or authority, they'll take care of those spheres. So one of those spheres was, was to be attended to by Great Britain. Another was to be tended to by the United States. A third by the Soviet Union. And a fourth, the People's Republic of China. And this understanding of how the world would be arranged was based upon the notion of balance. The Soviet Union, the People's Republic of China, Great Britain, and the United States could work together as four policemen and bring peace to the world. Now, what's wrong with that conception of international affairs? What proved to be problematic in that conception of world affairs? Well, if you have a police force and it's made up of four parts, and each of those parts is tended to by a different regime, you've got to have one sense, which is what? That all of those police have the same sense as to what is right and what is wrong, what peace they're trying to keep, what the law ought to be. The danger in the case of working out this agreement with the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China is we come to soon find out that they don't want to work with the United States and Great Britain for world peace. That the Soviet Union has its own understanding of how things should be. It has its own understanding of what justice is, much like the People's Republic of China. Now, the fourth reading that I assigned for you today, a reading by the author George Kennan, who had spent a lot of time in Russia, is one of the most uh, instrumental um, uh, uh, things that take place in this time to awaken us uh, to the reality of Soviet politics and what the Soviets are after. Kennan says the following about the Soviet Union. He says, they are not like Americans. Uh, they have a mindset that's been captured, has been won over, by the communist ideal. They believe that what the United States represents in its capitalist economy, uh, in its free markets, in its individuality and all the rest, is actually a blight upon the world. And the long-term goal of the Soviets, Kennan tells us, is to do what? It's to conquer Western civilization. It's to implement its understanding of justice. Uh, now, any uh, individual who had uh, understood Karl Marx and what he was after when he said workers of the world unite would have, right, so on the surface level, understood that the goal of the communists was a universal goal. The goal of the Soviet Union was world conquest. But it's not until Kennan gives us this insight and tells us that not all regimes are alike that we begin to awaken to this idea and the reality that when we look at the Soviet Union, it has its own plans for the world, and those plans are very different than what plans that we have. And there is going to be a battle 
There is going to be a Cold War, and we are going to need to contain the Soviet Union if we're going to lead the world in the right direction after World War II. Thank you.